Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining the author's table today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, of course. I'm glad that you reached out. I was, I was, uh, I was happy that you did because I, you have a lot to talk about. I do, and yes. I am always honored to share it because I know somebody is listening that can relate, That's and correct. I just, I want them to know that they're not alone. That's right. Um, well, let, let's let's begin. Uh, let, let's start off with uh, how you began writing and and uh, your motivation. Sure. So I have always written. I, when I was a little girl, I had a diary and I lived, used to like to write. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, that continued. I found it was cheap therapy yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me to just put it all down out on, on paper. Um, and I really find that when my fingers are on the keys of my keyboard, it just flows. It's kind of amazing. It just comes out. And so I love that, but I've I've written all my life. Now, was it just something that that uh, just I mean, just to write because it felt good, or was there something that you were really focused on? I can paint a picture with words, and a lot of times my writings are emotionally based. In mm -hmm. fact, in my book. Uh, the surviving dating abuse. I actually included some poems that I wrote during that time because I have a lot of my writing still. Um, some are a little bit dark because there's sadness and mm -hmm. betrayal, and then others are really about the happy times as well. Oh, sure. So if you pulled my writings out, you could pretty much see my headspace during that time, my relationships during that time, uh, my life basically. Now, do you, do you think you'll ever bring those out, Jen? So for me to include the few that I did in my book was a pretty big step because mm -hmm. um, that's a new level of vulnerability. Oh, yes. Than just oh, writing yeah. the details of a story. Um, I did it. So it's not to say that I won't bring out more, right. uh, but that was a pretty good, pretty good step for me. In fact, I had already written the story and then I was like, wait a second. If I include my writings, that just makes this book even more personal for people reading it. That's right. Yeah. And so yeah. I did. Yeah, actually, you know, um, that's sort of what I did with my poem book. My wife and I put it, a, a poem book together, and it was basically really from growing up. You know, just I, I, I kept a folder, and and I just kept those for a long time, and um and then we brought all that out and we, we made our poem book. And it is, it is personal, you know, it's, but it, it's, it's something that comes from within, you know, and, and, it, and it feels good to actually have it out there for other people too, you know. Absolutely. I had beta readers, um, but right after I wrote it, before it went to editors and everything, I sent it to some beta readers. And that was one of the comments they made was the fact that I included those poems. It really just made it more intimate. Oh, sure. Um, Absolutely. And so, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, okay, I this is this is good. That's, that's <laughs> right. That's a good thing. That's right. Okay. Now, now let's talk about your uh, book called Why I Survived. Mm -hmm. And now that covers four unpleasant situations in your life. Is that correct? So it is. It, it says... um. How sharing my story helped me heal from dating abuse, armed robbery, abduction, and other forms of trauma. Mm -hmm. And it is four lived experiences of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as you know, probably from researching me, I have a podcast as well. In my podcast, I share my surviving um, armed robbery and abduction, but I had never put voice behind my dating abuse story. Mm -hmm. I decided I was more comfortable during this process to write it versus speak it. So the first story in my book is the dating abuse. The second is surviving the armed robbery abduction. The third is a year ago, I was at a conference in Orlando and someone got in my personal space, forced themselves into an elevator with me, asked me a crazy question and really scared me. Mm -hmm. And so what I took away from that situation is I was meant to talk about situational awareness, our personal safety, 
safety, being aware of our surroundings, especially as a woman. Absolutely. So, so that's story mm -hmm. three. And then the last story is different. Um, it's very positive and inspiring. And it's about a um, time that I went to Virginia Beach. And I learned the difference between our intentions and our purpose and how having faith over fear allows us to fulfill our purpose. So it was important to me to end my book even after all of these challenges and everything, but to end on that positive note of here mm -hmm. are some, some little lessons that you can take with you. Oh, absolutely. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we all, we all have our own stories to tell, don't we? You know, yes. e you know either good or bad or whatever, but it's, it's, I think everybody has that journey and that, and that you know, that, that background in which to share. You know, and, and some of it may not be pleasant, but, it's, but, but at the same time, when you're, talking about it you're reaching others and you're not even aware of it because everybody has gone through that s similar or same situation too you are so right about that and that was one of the things that i guess surprised me maybe mm -hmm. um is as i started to speak because i do public speaking as well yes. for organizations um is people it, they might come up to me right after but usually it might be a month three months, six months down the road, they'll, somebody who watched me speak will contact me and they'll be like, I saw you. I saw your courage. I'm ready to share my story. Mm -hmm. And so like, that is amazing oh, for yeah. me, it, you and, know? You know, it may be too, that that could be where you're saving someone's life too. Yeah. It, like you said, I, I just don't, I don't know. I, right. I just, this is my purpose and in my passion. It feels good too, though, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. especially especially seeing that person that comes to you or or writes to you or whatever, and 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 says you 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 touched me, you reached me, and so you're you're actually guiding that person to another path, in which I think that is huge. Yep. I, yeah, I literally have just been called and I, I go, I challenge my comfort zone through this whole process. And I have found that that is truly where like the growth comes and mm -hmm. that's right. Just, yeah. Truly feeling your purpose. It's one thing to know it, but when you can feel it, like you said, the feedback that you get that's and right. um, knowing I'm making a difference, but I don't need someone to come and tell me that I right. just know that I am. Yeah. It, 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 you just know. And, it, and it's, and it's. I, I've been there too, where you, you, you're, you know, you have a gift, you mm -hmm. know, and 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 for, and to to have these outlets, and I and I think that's huge because people can, can hear you and and uh, grow too, and and uh, and hopefully, you know, get you know get better too, you know. Um, now you you also have a podcast called I Need Blue. Now w what what does that mean, and how did you be you get that name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I Need Blue actually is twofold. Mm -hmm. um, it started out uh, really focused on our first responders because as a survivor of armed robbery and abduction, the law enforcement mm -hmm. um, rescued us. And then an EMT had to come and take care of a lady who was having a medical uh, emergency in front of me. Um, I had to call 911 dispatch. Um, so I have a passion for our first responders. Mm -hmm. And so I need blue. The blue was um, like the, the blue line for law enforcement, but it represented all first responders for me. Um, so that's kind of how I need blue started. Then I went to PodFest a year ago and my peers gave me some feedback that made a lot of sense. And it was like, Jen, you know, looking at your logo and your name, we have no idea that this is lived experiences from everyday people. We think this is like for police officers or something. We have no idea. And I appreciated that feedback. I took a few months and joggled it around in my head. Mm -hmm. And then I, I redesigned my logo, kept the I need blue. But now the I need blue stands for I have created space for survivors to feel they belong. Mm -hmm. are loved, understood, and my favorite, empowered. Right. So, yes. Yeah, so I have first responder stories. And so those stories get my original logo. And then everyday people like you and me, we get my new logo uh, with the heart, has uh, the hand with some hearts yeah. and, and the words to let people know what the blue stands for. So um, it was a learning experience, a transition, but, but I've loved it. I've loved it. But the same passion. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, absolutely. It, it, can, it can go through all kinds of transformations, but it has the same same source. Absolutely. I did not want to lose like the the foundation of why I started my podcast. That's right. I I needed to clarify though the message and who I was trying to reach because I I obviously want to reach as many people as I possibly can. Absolutely. Um, now, as being a survivor, now what resources do you have, Jen, that you can you can provide to others in need? Mm -hmm. So a couple of things is number one, also incorporated in my podcast is I interview organizations mm -hmm. as well, um, different organizations who help survivors. Generally, it'll be a lived experience from someone like you and then the organization that helped them. So it isn't just organizations coming out and advertising their organization. No, there has to be actually right. a lived survivor yeah. to say, hey, I give my personal testimony um, for this organization. So that's one way through listening on my website website, I have a resources tab um, where you will find listed the organizations that have been on my podcast, but also national hotlines. Um, it's all downloadable in PDF form. And there you will also find um, safety tips as well to share with whatever, print them off, put them in your, you know, on your refrigerator, yeah, at work, whatever. Um, so that is one way you can also get resources um, from me as well. Now, do you, mm -hmm. do you also... Um... Now, has anybody ever called you, like in, in like a situation where they literally just called you and say, hey, I need some help? I have not had that, no. I meet with a lot of local people who, um, in that moment, they're not going through something, but they're involved in something. So say, for example, if they're beginning a court system process, mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I will not put anyone on my podcast that's going through a court system. You know, I, you don't want to say something. I don't want to get in the middle right. of anything. So for them, a lot of times it's I was told I should call you. I just need somebody to talk to. You want to get coffee? Absolutely. So we go, we get coffee, and they just need somebody they can trust to kind of share things with. Um, and then if they decide they want to share their story when the court system and all of that is done, then by all means, we can share your story. I have a couple of people that are that are doing that now, mm. um, going through the court system. And then when they're done, because um, it's it's one of them is a topic I haven't talked about yet on my podcast, um, but it's very real. So, yeah, that's, that is... that, that's awesome. I think that's uh, I think it's a good feeling, though. Scary, but good feeling, you know. Yes. You know, because yes. you're, you're helping someone and in, in, in a could be a serious situation. Absolutely. And so I always, you know, if it's obviously immediate danger, you right. know, call 911, you know, do whatever you need to do, because I certainly can't um, help with that. And I'm not a therapist or anything like that. <laughs> and I, I make that disclaimer on my website. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I just have lived experiences and intuition. And sometimes I'm talking to God the whole time they're talking to me, just kind of asking, like, please just guide me on what I am supposed to say to this individual to help them. Oh, um, yeah, it, it can be a l little tricky situation. Yes. I, I listen to my instincts a lot. Um, when I get when I get chills, I know sure. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, that's like a little uh, a little sign. Yes. Yeah. And now now as a survivor, an author, mm -hmm. a podcast host, a speaker, uh -huh. a mentor. Yes. And, and most of I think the, the biggest thing of that is that you care. Mm hmm. You know, that you care about others and you want to help them. Absolutely. And I, and I believe, you know, God works in mysterious ways. You know, sometimes you have to go th through the bad to get to the good, unfortunately. But but it's yeah. that that's, I think, part of the life lesson. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I believe that he's he's you're he's going through you to reach to others. And and, and I think that's a good a great feeling, you know. Yes. You're so right about going through things. There were so many times I just looked up to heaven and I was like, okay, God, how much more do you think I can take? Mm, like, yeah. really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I am here, That's right. right? And, you know, the, the dating abuse started in 2003. Mm. So however many years it's been, 17, whatever, 
I am now at the point where I, I can speak it and I have written it and then other things happened after that and I'm here and I now can, can share them and I went through it so that I can be that person that others can relate to and feel comfortable reaching out and then I created a platform where they can share. I mean, you, you think about where you are today and then where you were. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, sometimes I still, I look back you and- to pinch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, did I, did I really go through all that? You know what I'm saying? You're in a very different headspace back then. I mean, think back almost 20 oh, years oh, yeah. where you were. Yeah. yeah, compared to where you were today. So I think that also for me learning that, wow, there there is growth. There is- forgiveness there is moving forward i had a friend who kept telling me you know it's going to be okay and man it would upset me i was like you have no idea what you're talking about but he was right mm -hmm. i'm okay and i think that's the biggest part too where where someone is going through a situation now they can't see it but the person on the outside can mm -hmm. you know and that's where the person on the inside that they, they need that that reach out so they can get the help. And I think that's part of, you know, you and so many other people are doing that, you know, especially yes. today, you know, especially now. You right. Know, you know, with with yeah. everything going on anymore, I think it's, it's, it's so critical. Absolutely. It's yeah. important to know you're not alone in that it's, that it's okay to ask for help. That's right. Absolutely. You know, there is actually, there's strength in asking for help, whether you're a person like you and I, or you're a first responder, it doesn't matter. You, you know, know, and you hear that too from uh, police officers and, and that, you know, okay, you're a man, you know, but that's okay. You know, we all need help. Yes. I actually just wrote an article in a local, uh, 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 they, they used to have a magazine, now they're all digital. And it was, they wanted me to write about PTSD. Mm -hmm. And I started to write a story about me, but I wasn't called to do that. And I stopped and I started a new one. And it was about our first responders. And it was about when the helper needs to be the help E. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, yeah. um, you know. You know, because, uh, you know, you figure, uh, you know, a man has that, you know, that ego and that, you know, but no, we're all human. Absolutely. You know, we all go through those times where, where things can happen to a man or a woman, but you know, those resources are out there, you know, mm -hmm. for, for help. So, and I think, and I think by doing that makes you, makes you a better and stronger person, not just trying to be the tough person and say, oh, I can handle it myself. No. Right. You know, you're, you're so right about that. So we're trying to change that stigma of, of mental health and asking for help and, and things like that. So, you know, you think too, like the military is that way too. You yes. Know, big time. Yeah. You know. My boys are Marines. My oldest, he did his four years and then he, he got married and he lives in California. And my youngest is still, uh, he's in Japan. Oh boy. And I'm watching what's going on over in Sudan. So, you know, mom's always oh, nervous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always nervous. <laughs> um, yeah. But I do, I worry about their mental health as well. Sure. Um, just from people I've talked to that have been in the military before. Um, but then also just knowing what first responders do anytime you're in that protective role. So I do, I, I pray for them and I just pray that if they need help, that, mm -hmm. that they will reach out. Yeah. And they have mom too. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's right. So, okay. Now, now what is your message, Jen, to others that, um, that are going through a difficult time? And, and so like, what, what is your main message? I end each episode, each podcast episode with mm -hmm. you, you are stronger than you think. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. Um, like if you would have said, Jen, how would you handle being, you know, robbed at gunpoint? I, I, I guarantee you my answer would have been something different than what I actually did. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. yeah, people are like, oh, <laughs> I would pass out or I would do whatever. But in all honesty, you really don't know mm -hmm. what you're going to do. But I truly believe the human, the, the spirit and, and the strength we have in us is greater than we realize until that's challenged. That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's so easy to say something on the outside of, oh, yeah, I'll do this and do that. But when it happens, you're in a different situation altogether. Yep, exactly. And, and that is so true. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's so true. So now you did say, too, um, that you have a website. And what is your website, Jen? Sure. It's ineedblue.net. Okay. That's, that's for the podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. The book is, which you can find the book on there, but the book has its own website, and it's whyisurvive.com. Okay, excellent. Now, do, do, yeah. you, do you see yourself writing more in the future, though? Mm -hmm. So my intention in the future is, well, number one, to make this an audio book. So it's it's a paperback and an ebook. So mm -hmm. now the next step will be an audio book. And if you have any tips on that, I am all for learning everything I can. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, so then after that, I have been getting release signs formed from my guests um, because not everybody wants to listen to a podcast, but I feel that their stories are so relevant mm -hmm. and they came on because they wanted to share to help other people. So I plan to repurpose those, make them into a story format versus the interview mm -hmm. and compile and make a book, uh, based nice. upon their stories as well. That is awesome. Yeah, that's my intention. It takes time. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does, especially the audio book. Yes. Well, I figure I'm a podcaster. I have all my equipment. I want to do it myself, so I figure I can figure this out. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, um, now, do you have a, a next like event that's coming up or like a book signing event? Uh, so I don't have one in uh, the near future, but they – just sometimes appear in my universe. You know how yes. that is, little oh, yes. opportunities? Yes, I do. And I, yeah. I jump on them, yes. But the next one I actually have coming up is in September. I am sponsoring the Brevard Recovery Fest. It's their second year anniversary. Okay. Um, and they're here to bring awareness to our community in regards to um, uh, drug abuse, recovery, fentanyl, things like that. Many of them have already been on my podcast, a lot of the organizations. And so I will be there talking about my podcast and selling my bunk, my book amongst my friends. Uh, I love them all. And then in October, uh, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, uh, Serene Harbor, which is a certified domestic violence shelter here in Brevard County, has asked me to be their keynote speaker for a large fundraising oh, event. Good for you. Yeah. So I will I will share my story probably for the first time publicly there. And then they have offered to allow me to sell my books and stuff too. Oh, so that's I, yeah, I have yeah. two events coming up, um, but a little further down into this year. But as you know, that'll be here before you know it. Oh, absolutely. This whole year's flying by already. I know. Yeah, I know. Jeez. <laughs> okay. I, well, I have to do, I have to say one thing though. Uh, one, yeah. one of your quotes, yeah. I uh, be the light at the end of your tunnel. Yeah. I, I like that. Now, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we always talk about the light at the end of the tunnel, right? We're always mm -hmm. striving for that that light. You're going through something, you know, kind of dark, whatever, and, and you're like, oh, I can see the light. And that, yes. that almost gives you that last burst of energy, right, that you That's need right. to complete your task or to get wherever you're going. But one day I was just sitting here and I was like, wow, imagine – if you were that light at the end of the tunnel, imagine if after you're going through this darkness and this cave and this adventure feeling hopeless, that at the end of the at the end of this cave, you see yourself. Like imagine how profound that would be. It's like it's like turning it. Yes. 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 And so it literally I was it just came to me. It just popped in my head and I see a visual. I like that saying because you can see a visual with it. Yes. It's relatable because everybody talks about the light at the end of the tunnel, but we never talk about that that light being us. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes, yeah. that's awesome. That, that's I, I, that's what caught my eye. I, I do like that. That's really nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, of course. You're very welcome. Well, well, Jen, uh, th this is, has been a wonderful uh, treat, and I, and I wish you the very best in your adventures. And I know you're going to do very well, and um, and just keep it up. Um, and I and I think you're a valuable resource. And uh, and I think that uh, your your uh, website has a lot of valuable information that people need to check out. Yeah, it's it's purposeful. Everything I do is purposeful. Just like the book is full of resources mm -hmm. as well. Hotlines. Uh, it references podcast episodes. If you want to hear more stories. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's very important to me to have it be purposeful. And it is. And, Thank you. Yeah, of course. And so, again, I wish you the very best. And, uh, and I hope again that we uh, do this again. Absolutely. Anytime. Well, I love it. Yeah, thank you so much. And, uh, and I wish you the very best, okay? And you have a wonderful evening. I will. You too. Thank you very much, Jen. Okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.